of James' most amazing feats is jump roping with as many as three people on him. <laughs> Hey guys, in this part of my interview with James Brewster Thompson, we're going to find out how he became the rope master, get the origin behind that. Also, some of his history with some early UFC fighters, some information about Frank Dukes, and other things. Before we get into the video, I want to tell you about the next big content creator platform. Fans follow me. Fans follow dot me. FFM. Check it out. Linked in the description below. All the information's there. So, I'm a founding member of the platform and the director, so there's a reason why I bring it up. Obviously, I want it to be successful. I'm going to push it, but there is a bigger, grander vision here that I think will really interest you guys and also provide some opportunities. But just a quick summary, what exactly is a content creator platform? Well, there are platforms like Patreon, like OnlyFans, though that obviously is skewed more towards an adult-type content that's not safe for work. Fans Follow Me is a much more respectable platform, and we do welcome content creators of all kinds, of course, but our big push and focus is really going to be in the martial arts community, fitness, bodybuilding, and combat sports. And we already got a lot of really great bare-knuckle boxers on there. We're going to get some amazing boxing legends, champions on there. Uh, we got a lot of great martial arts. We're going to obviously get more. You will recognize a lot of these names. We already got Muhammad Kesey, a.k.a. Tongpo from Kickboxer. I'm on there, of course. I'll be putting out uh, exclusive content, you know, cool behind-the-scenes stuff and more. So the content creator platforms in general, it's a way to support your favorite content creator slash celebrity slash sports athlete. But in doing so, you can directly connect with them. So it's mutually beneficial all around. It's really cool. But as far as the grand vision goes, obviously, I meet a lot of people on the channel. I do a lot of networking. I know writers, directors, actors, stuntmen, and more. And I want to do nothing more and be a part of bringing that magic of the 80s and 90s back as far as like those kind of action and martial arts films, which let, let's face it, they don't really have the quality anymore. I mean, you, you do have some good ones here and there, but in general, um, it, it's not quite there. The magic's kind of gone in a lot of ways, but once fans follow me blows up, me and my partners, we are going to finance these films. Minimum co-finance. It depends on the budget of these films, but there's a few projects in mind already that I know are going to be fantastic. And if you're a martial artist or an actor, by the way, create a profile on the platform because we will be watching. We will be farming talent, so to speak. It'll be part of the casting process to get in these projects. So create a profile. And if, you, if you're not a content creator, support some of the people on the platform. There's going to be a lot of really amazing uh, names on there. And you'll get that exclusive content and that direct access. And if you know content creators, recruit them over because there's incentive to do so. You'll find out all the information on the homepage. Fans, follow me. Check out the link and let's blow this thing up because 80s and 90s, we got to make these kind of films again. And I will do whatever I can to blow this platform up, make money, and put it to finance these films. And use some of you guys if you, that's actually what you're interested in. So it's all part of this grand big vision. You know, going, going back to your whole jump rope thing. Like, how and why did you even come up with that? <laughs> well, I had a basketball coach in high school. He made us jump rope when I was a junior on the varsity basketball team. And when he first asked us to jump rope, he had this whole bucket full of jump ropes. Mm -hmm. And he says, I want everybody to jump rope at least 10 or 15 minutes a day uh, as part of your, uh, your training this semester. And I went to the coach because I was kind of like the spokesperson for the rest of the team. I said, coach, we're not doing no jump rope. I said, that's for sissies. That's for girls. Mm -hmm. He said, James, do you think uh, Muhammad Ali is a girl? I said, no, Muhammad Ali is my main man, you know. He said, well, Muhammad Ali jump ropes. I said, well, boxers always jump rope, coach. But no, we're not going to be jump roping, sir. Mm -hmm. He said, James, do you think Bruce Lee is a sissy? I said, no, Bruce Lee is my main man. <laughs> he said, Bruce Lee jump ropes too. And he showed me a picture of Bruce Lee jumping rope. And I said, coach, we're still not going to jump rope. He said, well, James, if you don't jump rope, and since you're talking for the rest of the team, I'm going to have you guys do extra suicide drills, at least uh, 20 minutes extra. Suicide drills is where you touch this line and you touch an equal distance from that line and you touch that line, you touch the other one, oh, you yeah, sure. and you do the whole gym where you got all the lines in the gym. Mm -hmm. And we had already been doing that for 20 minutes a day anyway in basketball practice. And I said, no, coach, we ain't going to do 20 more minutes of, of line drills. I said, or suicides. I said, we're not going to do that. He said, I said, we'll, I said, we'll jump rope. 
He said, I thought you'd come around. <laughs> so uh, he gave us the buckets. And that year, we were championship of the league in basketball. And the only thing we changed in the program was the jump rope. So wow. after that, I believed in the jump rope. And I, oh, sure. from that day on, I've jump rope ever since. But when did you decide, like, the jumping rope's not enough? I have to, like, start putting people on my shoulders. <laughs> well, now that came up at San Jose State. My first semester at San Jose State in 1975, I said, in judo, you got to pick people up. You got to throw people. Say a shoulder throw. You're throwing people and you're lifting people up. I said, now, since I love jumping rope, why not incorporate that feeling of lifting people or carrying people's weight mm -hmm. and, 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 and moving? I'll put somebody on my back, piggyback, and jump rope with them. And that's how I got started. I got that one person, put them on my back, start jumping rope uh, as part of my workouts for, for judo. And basically, people saw it. And uh, I, I sent out resumes to L.A. to TV shows and stuff like that. And I got on the, what's the lady's name? Uh, and she was real famous, but she had a talk show. So she had me come on her show to do a that jump rope trick with one person mm -hmm. put somebody on my back. And so I did that. And then another talk show saw that. And then they put me on their show. And then I did a show with Steve Garvey, the baseball player from LA. He was on a show called uh, the road to Moscow in 1980. And so they had all these Olympic athletes come on his show and he liked the jump rope and saw me do the jump rope and had me come on the show since I was training for the Olympics in 1980. And you know, in 1980, that Olympic, was uh, boycotted by the Russians. So we didn't even get to go to that Olympics, but still they, they showcased a lot of the athletes that made the teams in different sports that year on TV shows all over this country. Hmm. Do, now, do you have to get like an extra long jump rope? Cause wouldn't the jump rope you would think hit the guy or girl on top of your shoulders? Well, I'm six foot one in height, but I have the longest reach you ever see for a six one person. If you saw oh, me, really? Next, in fact, I haven't seen a person that's six one have a longer reach than me. I've always out. You, you would have been a great boxer, man. Maybe, yeah. maybe. <laughs> that's what I was thinking too. If I could, if I like getting hit in the face, yeah, in the sure. Head. You, you did have that <laughs> negative experience at that camp. Yeah, <laughs> but I, but I, I went on Steve uh, Garvey's show, and there was a lady that had a bald head. She was in the first major Star Wars Wars movie. I don't know if you saw that first one. That was a major, uh, big hit. But she she had the ball lady, the sex symbol that was off in that Star Star Wars movie, where I, I put her on my back and jump rope on that same show. And then I also picked up Steve Garvey and put Steve Garvey on my back and jump rope with him 50 times in a row. Wow. Without stopping. And Steve Garvey had these big old Popeye forearms, you know, just huge forearms like Popeye. And I said, yeah, baseball players got some big forearms, you know, <laughs> even bigger than some of the martial arts people. Wow. Now, but, now the jump rope, when you were doing this uh, training and obviously you were very good and successful at judo, did mm -hmm. other teammates say, hey, I got to start jump roping with people on my back? Did that take off or were you the only one doing it? I was the only one doing it. Uh, no, nobody wanted to do that. <laughs> no, nobody wanted to do that because it is a little bit dangerous. And, and a lot of people have enough problems jumping rope without people hanging on. Without people, sure. And, and I have... Uh, the Guinness Book of World Record of jump roping with three people hanging on me, one on the shoulders, one on this hip, one on the other hip. And I do 10 jumps for the record. And my record is 460, uh, 410 pounds. But I've been That's up to nuts. 460 pounds. Wow. All while jumping roping. So do you know, do. James, do you know if anybody tried to even beat that record? Like, is there a guy you're watching like, oh, this guy's getting close? Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of nobody breaking that record. Uh, I thought the Russians would do it because a lot of <laughs> the Russians, stuff. <laughs> you know, they do some crazy stuff. I mean, I saw one Russian act where one guy was standing on the shoulders and then another guy stood on that guy's shoulders and they were jumping rope. Oh, that's nuts. <laughs> yeah. So I figured, you know, I said one of the Russians from the circuses in Russia will probably try try to beat my record, but nobody's done it since wow. i did it at 56 years old oh so that's that. like what 2009 or something yeah but 2010 i think 2010 so, okay so that record's been around for for a while 2011 yeah but uh, i didn't think it would stay this long like i say i thought one of the circus strong men would, would 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 break it by now but and especially russia russia they have schools where people go to to be circus acts 
and they graduate from those schools to be a circus performer. Mm -hmm. I don't know nowhere, maybe in Europe somewhere they, they do that too, but Russia, you can go to school to be a circus entertainer and get a college degree for uh, or or for, for being a circus circus yeah performer. that's interesting but that that's the kind of time and commitment you mm -hmm. you know so, somebody would need to do yeah. some of the acts the crazy mm -hmm. human feats uh that they're mm -hmm. capable of now you see that in las vegas the car and a lot of those shows you have all a lot of those people are from russia a lot of the the performers now the only problem is once they can't do all those feats of strength and the stuff they do in the circus uh then they have to make a decision, especially here in the United States when they perform in some of the shows in Las Vegas. They have to decide that we're going to stay in as citizens and stay here, dual citizenship and stay here in the United States, or we're going to go back to Russia, you know, and see what we can get into over there since we no longer can, can do this circus act. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't imagine that career could be super long. Right. Um hey, in the so, early 40s, they have had enough. Yeah, I would think so. Uh do you still jump rope with people on your back? I can still do it, but uh, lately I've been having uh, back problems, you know, lower lumbar and in between L3 and L5. Mm -hmm. And so I've been trying to get that together. And, and I've kind of promised a few people I'd stop doing the jump rope and just do the ventriloquism, you know, where I can... A little, a little easier on the body, sure. A little <laughs> easier on the body. And so, but I don't know, maybe, you know... I've been able to use the jump rope as a tool to reach kids with my anti-drug message. So I've traveled all over the country over the last, you know, 40 years, and I've done close to 2000 assemblies telling kids to stay away from drugs, listen to their parents, stay in school as That's long great. as they can. It was, it was great. I liked um, how he did all those um, cool tricks and um, you have to really stay in shape and eat the right food and not take drugs to be big and strong like that. And so it was a real good tool that got people's attention. And you know how kids, sometimes it's hard for them to pay attention when they're in grade school and middle school and they're horse playing in the audience or talking to their friends. Well, with my act, they stayed on me the whole time. They were watching, saying, What's, what is this guy going to do next? Is he going to do a one thumb push up? Is he going to do extension push ups on two thumbs? You know, what is he going to do next? Or is he going to grab my teacher and jump rope with him sure. uh, yeah. on his shoulders? You know, so. I was able to really put together a 45 minute assembly over the years where I would mix it up with entertainment and feats of strength and comedy. I do ventriloquism. I played harmonica and jump rope at the same time. I had a cowboy rope where I could do a couple of the cowboy tricks where I jumped through the circle with the cowboy stuff and the and around the body with the with the with the rope and everything. So and I had a bull whip. I'd be popping a bull whip at some point during the assembly. I mean, it was like a vaudeville act, the message. And so if you could put something like that together, you kind of guaranteed that the teacher's going to like it, the kid's going to like it, and the teachers like the message and the entertainment. Sure. But the kids love the entertainment to the extreme. And hopefully a few of them got the message that I was delivering to at the same yeah, time. Yeah, if if you're entertaining them, which obviously you are, then they're they're more receptive to listen to what you have to say. So that's great. That's really yeah. cool. Didn't you do that? Did you do that jump rope act at like the White House too? Yeah, I performed at the White House twice. Once for Bush Senior, his administration, and I performed for the Clinton administration at one point. And yeah, you really went far with that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And when I was at the White House, I jump rope with Willard Scott on my back from the Today Show. Uh, and it was on the White House lawn, real wet out there from dew and everything and slippery. And I said, man, if I drop this guy, all the senior citizens in this country are going to be wanting to kill me. <laughs> no. But I put Willard Scott on my back and jump rope with him on my back. And and you could see people back in the studio of Good Morning America with uh, Brian Gumbel and all of them. And they was making faces like, oh, man, I, I got a hernia, hernia just watching that. <laughs> you know? So you were performing that live basically on television. So yeah, that's that's a little bit of added pressure. You, you're not editing and cutting that out if you yeah. drop them. <laughs> and then also I got one of my friends from Hawaii to come over at that same performance. And I put him on my shoulders and he played bass guitar with a wireless mic. And he's just jamming up there while I'm jumping rope with him on my back. So we did a lot at the White House that year. They, they'll remember that. But uh, I think that was the one where I was with Bush Sr. 
And uh, basically, Barbara Bush sent me a thank you letter. That, and I thought that was nice of her. Yeah, you know, that's cool. Because Hillary and Clinton didn't send me a thank you letter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara Bush did. Oh, yeah, yeah, at least you got one of them. Um, do you train people in judo? I did for a while, but it was mainly intermediate level, mostly. And then I did private lessons. Like when I came to Vegas, I was about 56 years old. And a friend of mine introduced me to some of the martial art experts in the Vegas area. One of them was Frank Dukes. I mean, not Frank Dukes, but... Uh, well, you already knew Frank Dukes for, because yeah, of Lionheart Frank, anyway. Right. One of the people the friend introduced me to was Frank Mir. So for about Frank a year Mir, and huh? a half, I worked with Frank Mir on throws and stuff. I worked with him all the way up to the uh, the first Brock Lesnar fight. Mm. And he beat Brock Lesnar in that first fight. The second fight, Brock Lesnar beat him. But the first fight, Frank was was in on him. Nice. And, 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 and in some of the tournaments, you can notice that he does hip throws and a couple of throws that I worked with him on. And one thing about Frank Mir is that he wasn't the strongest heavyweight I've ever worked out with, but he was the smartest I've ever worked out with. This guy could learn stuff like you could show him one, one of your moves that you do in karate or whatever, and he could do it just as well as you could or better after one lesson. Or that two. quick. Nice. Yeah. He was real quick and he was real smart. He knew how to use whatever body he had, whatever strength he had. He wasn't as strong as a Brock Lesnar, but he ended up getting him in an ankle lock and beating him. Remember in that first fight? So he was smart enough that he used everything he had, whatever talents he had, he could use it. That's and so I admired it. I wished I could have had that type of talent where you could learn stuff that fast. I'd show him a throw and he would do the throw better than I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, well, I guess I'm a good teacher, but no, it ain't that. Frank is just a good learner. And he was just real smart. He had a brain that I've never seen by heavyweight. And I've worked out with people like Brian Johnson, the mercenary, uh, the polar bear. I, mean, I, I I started out working out with uh, UFC fighters when the UFC first started in 1994. I was helping train Polar Bear, Brian Johnson, all these people down in San Jose at Javier's uh, 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 karate studio. Mm -hmm. And uh, mainly Javier is the one that trained uh, Khabib and all of them and uh, Vasquez uh, Kane. We all started out together working with the UFC fighters when it first started. And now, now back then, in. James, did, did you ever think about competing in the UFC back then in the I, early days? Oh, I thought about it briefly, but see, I was 41 years old at the time. Already 41, okay. Yeah, I was already 41. Now, when I was 31 and doing more karate and stuff and sparring with people, I would have said yes. Mm -hmm. But at 41, I said, do I really want all those punches at 41 years old? I said, this judo is a lot safer. I don't have to worry about people punching me all the time or kicking me in the, sure. in the shins and whatever. I said, but uh, if I was in those 30s, I probably would have. Mm -hmm. But at 41, I said, nah. Uh, too much damage could be done to my head and everything. And and one thing about the uh, fighting where you're punching and kicking, you got to be able to slip punches real well. Oh, and sure. I hadn't put enough time in, in the slipping punches. I was still getting hit whenever I'd spar with people in boxing. I worked out for boxing a few, I'd say about a year ago or a year and a half ago. I, I boxed for the first time in 30 years. And I was holding my own a little bit, but the guy I was boxing with, one of my coworkers, he was the guy that was just helping me set up this whole situation. Oh, cool. He hit me with a couple of real good hooks in, in the face and stuff. And I said, it's good I didn't get into boxing because I'm not slipping these punches as well as a Mayweather, Mayweather or, or Ali. You know, yeah, you I have to take advantage of that really long reach, man. Work, work that yeah. jab. <laughs> yeah, work the jab. And so, but I will say this, that, and I tell people all the time, if you're going to get into boxing or karate, learn how to slip punches and study people like Mayweather and Ali when they could slip punches real well. Mm -hmm. And even Tyson in his prime, he could slip punches real well with the rope of dope and, and bobbing and stuff and getting out of the way. You got to learn those basics real well if you want to not take so much punishment. Yeah, know? that that's the real expert level for any martial art is like they're masters at defense, right? The defense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Here's a question. Have, so have you ever trained martial arts with Frank Dukes? Uh, he was, uh, when I went there to work out with, uh, with, with Frank Dukes, uh, he was just going over the choreographing when we were doing the movie. Hmm. But 
in a in my personal life, I haven't taken lessons from you. But in the in, when we were on the film, that's when he was showing us a lot of stuff, and I was impressed with what he knew. You know. Yeah, he's he's got a lot of knowledge, no doubt. Now I know I know you and Frank are friends. Did that friendship start uh, with Lionheart, or did you just like reconnect with them later down in the road in life? I reconnected with him later when I came to Vegas here. Did you know Frank was living in Vegas? How how'd you meet up with him in Vegas? I didn't know him. I didn't know him. he was still here. Uh, basically, I think I called him or I saw him somewhere, and okay. then we started talking. Oh, that's cool. So, I mean, it must be cool to have that reunion, uh, you know, probably, I would almost think probably, what, decades after Lionheart? It's like you right. guys are both just having to be in Vegas and like, hey, you know, reminisce about the uh, the good old days, right? Yeah, and I found out that he was in Vegas, too. So I we both uh, kind of reached out. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, nice. He, I mean, like I say, uh, he's one of those guys that uh, I was really impressed with him on the set when I was talking to him all the time on the set. And I said... This guy here, I sure wouldn't want him as an enemy. <laughs> said, he's said, a big guy. I mean, he's yeah. he's bigger than you. He's like six four, I think, isn't mm -hmm. he? Yep. Yeah. Six four. Yeah. Um, hey, let's how'd you get into sumo wrestling? In the next part of the interview with James, we're gonna talk all about sumo wrestling. Very interesting stuff in that one. Sumo, the uh, rock stars of Japan. <laughs> 